In this video, we're going to be talking about how understanding the fundamentals of line drawing opens up a wide ranging toolbox of possibilities. Line drawing has so many accessory facets. It's the hidden jewel inside art theory. There are some real gems in this episode and we'll give you a bonus at the end. So stay with us to see how this information can help your art, no matter your style. If this is your first time here, welcome. We're, We're the, the Art Apes. Apes. Our mission is to give you the information and understanding of advanced art theory so you can move your art forward faster. In each video, we will help you discover and uncover the difficult to find information which the masters understood and then give you ideas on how you can apply it to your work today. We want to save you years of frustration, stagnation, and struggle, and help you focus your study. First, we're going to give you some history of line drawing, a couple of quotes from Leonardo da Vinci, and how understanding line can give energy in your work. Most of the earliest forms of drawing throughout history, like we have previously discussed in other episodes, are in the nature of outline drawings. Cave paintings are immensely sophisticated and are able to communicate to us across 20,000 years. Really, when you think about it, it's amazing how little line work has in common with all the capabilities of our vision. Outlines really only exist at the boundaries of objects, the masses, even at the edges. Using line appears to have many disadvantages. From any point of view, boundaries are not always clearly defined, and the edges tend to merge with the masses which surround them, only to emerge a little ways on. This relationship of a line to the visual appearance isn't really justified, and yet our instinct is for line drawing. As we've spoken about before, our instinct to use a line to describe an object comes from our sense of touch. When we feel an object, there's no merging into the surrounding mass, but we feel that change, that boundary, which we automatically think of as a line. Why is this important? There's a more direct access to our imagination, if you will, in line drawing than anything else in pictorial art. Much of the emotional attraction given by fine design is due largely to line work. The power that line possesses allows us to lead the eye of the viewer, to direct the eye where we desire. It's amazing, I think, how using this facet of line and using it to concentrate the attention of the viewer, it's an interesting characteristic. In other episodes, we will talk about a harmonic sense of line and the relationships, a music of line that's found at the base of all good art. We'll talk about that also in later episodes when we talk about line rhythm. Let's go back and get a little history here. We can talk for a moment about early Egyptian wall art. These paintings were outlines tinted. These lines cut into the rock were painted or had a low relief carved into the surface. Most likely, the next evolution was introducing a little shading to relieve the flatness of the work. And it would have also imitated the low relief carving, I suppose. That's as far as things went as far as depiction of form until well into the Renaissance. Now, why did we bother about talking about that? It's because it's going to have an effect on literally everything moving forward. Really, Botticelli was using this technique of using an outline and lightly shading the form. The paintings were designed for the beauty of something called the conservation of values. When you look at Botticelli's paintings, the form is outlined and there's the barest mention of the underlying musculature. All the forms go rounded and smooth for the sake of harmony and grace. Light and shade were seriously explored at first by Leonardo da Vinci. At the time, Leonardo's work amazed everyone. It seems difficult for us to understand where the artistic use of light and shade had been up to this time. Again, this proves something which I will talk about again and again. The eye only perceives what, is, what it is on the lookout for. In other words, if you don't know to look out for something, it's 
invisible to you. Even with all of that, there was stro still a strong sense of touch association. Light and shade were still mostly being draped upon the outline of the object. It was still just the solids in space idea that art was appealing to. So Leonardo stated, the first object of a painter is to make a simple flat surface appear like a relievo and some parts detached from the ground. He who excels all others in that part of art deserves the greatest praise. Uh, there's something in the statement from Leonardo which really hit me. He's describing how we want our works to appear to protrude out from the surface. The standout surface quality has at its core idea a strong attraction to the sense of touch. In later episodes, we will go into chiaroscuro and sfumato and other techniques which were used during this time, but now we're only looking at how vision, line, and sense of touch are absolutely related. So we've covered a lot of human history and Western art up to the Renaissance. So you may have the question, so how does understanding the sense of line make a difference in my paintings and drawings? That's a good question. Let's look back at that for a moment. As a quick refresher, line is used to describe the boundary between the mass of the object and the area surrounding it. It is the edge of the mass where it meets the air or another object. Have you painted everything or drawn everything with the same sort of brush stroke or the same sort of pencil stroke? These make for boring paintings and drawings. In other episodes, we will tell you why they're boring and some tactics to find these boring passages and some ideas about when to leave them and when to change them. Do your paintings or drawings feel? What I mean by that is, do you get a sense of the way everything in your paintings feel to your sense of touch? Especially the important things, those things which are the subject of the painting. Have you satisfied the eye to see the sense of touch? These moments in an artwork are so important. A common problem within a work is often that everything in the painting or everything in the drawing is done to the same level. When we start giving the essence of what we are drawing or painting, and those things that describe to us as individual and what these things are, how hard they are, or how soft they are, or how smooth, or how rough they are, creates so much more importance to the viewer, and we can impart how we feel about them to the viewer. If you notice, what we're really doing here is importing the sense of touch and the lack of this very quality can wreck an otherwise good painting or drawing. Let's complicate it a bit more when you add distance, a line of trees perhaps. What are the qualities of distance trees that you need to say about distant trees? Or for example, how do you express in paint or pencil or a metal pole? the coldness of the metal, the hardness of the metal, the smoothness of the metal. Are there edges? And if there are edges, do they disappear and reappear? Or is the pole round and reflecting the light of a parking lot? And what does that roundness do to your color? Depending on your sensibilities and the picture you're making, these are just a few of the considerations you could take and express into your picture. This is a balancing act within the painting itself. How much in that location is needed to say metal pole? I get so excited when I think of all the possibilities that each of us can create inside any painting or drawing. It is so open to interpretation and consideration of what is truly essential. And this isn't even getting into the abstractness of anything that we're trying to draw. It's simply selecting those things which describe the things we want to say in a particular work. Now, for the bonus tip. If you made it this far, you deserve a bonus tip. Hey, as you look at an object, the edges can and often do 
disappear and reappear. Not all edges are equal in importance or descriptive ability. So look in your paintings and drawings and what do you see that you could have maybe said better and selected certain qualities to make them say more? Let me know in the comments below. Hey, we appreciate your time. Thanks for coming by. Hit the subscribe button, ring the bell. You know what to do.